Hey everyone, I'm here with the 2005 Jeep Rubicon long wheel based edition. Let's dive in for a quick review of the car. We're gonna go over the exterior, the interior, and then we're gonna take it for a drive. Starting off with the exterior, this car has such a presence. Just look at that. Such a demanding presence on the road. You have the worn winch right in front. So it's perfect. It's built for off-roading purposes. You have the Poison Spider steel bar in front, which helps when you're going off-roading um, to move like any kind of elements out of the way without damaging the actual body of the vehicle. Each corner is raised by four inches with the springs. Um, you have method wheels and about, I'll say two feet of clearance when you're driving. Pretty high ride height. Even I have to kind of step up a little bit when I get hop in here. Well, now this vehicle is for sale by Anthony. Again, I'm going to put his link below in the description so you guys can hit him up. Serious inquiries only if you're interested in buying this vehicle. He's selling it for $20,000. And yes, it's a lot of car for 20 k I'm going to show you why. Starting off with the wheelbase, this is a high in demand version of the Rubicon from this this age against 2005 it's the long wheelbase the way you could tell that you could tell that just by looking at where the wheel well starts here the traditional one will start around this part so you do have an extra I'll say a few inches added to the whole base which helps with uh, the balance of the car when you're going off-roading and provides extra space in the interior for storage that I'm gonna show in a bit. So you can have a little more trunk room versus the traditional one that virtually has zero trunk space. This version came out before the four door one. So this is still the two door. They don't have four doors of the 2005 Rubicons yet in 2005. And you also have a completely removable top. It's one piece removable, unlike the new ones that have like the two panels in front. This is all one piece. So. You do get the opportunity to see the sun and enjoy that, the open air feel in this vehicle as well. He also has upgraded wheels. So these are method wheels and they're massive. Honestly, it ties into the whole view and aesthetic of the car. The black wheels, the black exterior, all of that gives this car a really mean, rugged off-roady look. You have your extra one on the back. So this car is definitely trail ready, trail approved as it says on the side. And yeah, without a doubt, you can definitely conquer some of the roads here in Los Angeles, the, the bad ro roads in Los Angeles, and also some of the trails, the sand dune. Now, a few quirks about this, since it is a stripped down version, um, one rare piece is that you do have AC, which, isn't that common from this from this age so having ac is a bonus the side mirrors by on the other hand are manual so you do have to manually adjust these which is not bad because that means it's just one component that doesn't break in the future so that's one nice thing to take into account um you have the worn winch that helps if you were to get stuck or you want to pull someone out if one of your buddies takes his cyber truck in onto the trail and gets stuck, you can help pull your buddy out because you have a more capable car. You have the Poison Spider steel bar. This also ties into the whole aesthetic of the vehicle, giving it that very aggressive look. Just imagine it without it. Now imagine it with it on, I see it with it on. It, at, it gives it a very, very 
aggressive look and honestly this looks better than anyone else's rubicon that you're going to come across people are going to look at you and say this guy knows what he's doing he's definitely into off-roading you probably aren't going to take it off you're just going to take it to like whole foods or something because that's what people do in la but anthony the owner of this car actually used it for that purpose he did take it off-roading he did drive it around the city and it definitely conquers these roads because the roads here are really bad and this car does a good job handling them i drove it myself it's a real delight a real treat driving on the roads without having to angle the car just to get over bumps and curves so does a good job um the paint is still in pretty good condition considering the fact how many times he's driven this thing and how old this car is paints in still good condition just requires a little bit of touch-ups especially on the wheel wells but i don't think that's that necessary imagine a car that's been used off-road a bunch of times and these are still intact not too many scratches on this and that's what you like to see especially when you're buying a car like this a utilitarian car you want to see kind of like how the structure of the wheel wells the tires all of that and everything's in really good shape because that's the big part of where um, a lot of the the problems occur are these areas because they see a lot of damage a lot of abuse underneath you can see he at upgraded the springs and the shocks uh, the heavy duty uh steering uh the tie rods and the track bars and stuff um so this is all upgraded so if you were to knock into something it won't bend and it won't break easily it's going to take a lot of force to hurt that thing it has uh the lockers front and rear it has a four to one low transfer case um all the bushings and everything are new all the arms and tie rods and everything and track bars everything is new um, it has the Bilstein shocks with the JKS springs. It has the quick disconnect uh, sway bar links. They're easy to use, but they're still a little bit of a pain, you know? It's not like the new ones. And you just bring them right up, out of the way, and boom. Oh wow. So that you can have all the flex you need on the off-road trails, and then you can tie that thing up when you have both of them off. Yeah? Oh wow, that's cool. Yeah, so as he said, that adds to the flexibility when you're off-roading. You don't want it to be too rigid, too constructed uh, when you're off-roading. You kind of want a little bit of movement, so it helps. Um, yeah, the exterior, it's not really much to talk about on the exterior side because it is your typical Jeep Rubicon on the exterior. Again, this version is very high in demand because of the extended wheelbase and it's a two-door. Um, I'm just really in love with how everything ties together though. The aesthetics of it, all the upgrades with the shocks, the sway bar, the steering, um, all of those components, you, as you saw, are fairly new. And that's exactly what you want to see in a car like this. Last thing you want is to buy a 2005 car that still has all the stock components that haven't been upgraded, but have been used. So that's a major bonus and it's definitely a lot of what you're getting for 20k nice quirk are is all the extra vents on the hood helps all the hot air escape from the hood um when you're driving the car the funny thing is most of these vents are closed <laughs> i haven't had a chance to fix that yet but it was pretty funny he has he drilled three four holes oh, the wow. bottom he ones don't really do anything properly <laughs> <laughs> he forgot he forgot to cut the rest of it out which i'm like i, I was laughing when i saw i haven't had a chance to fix that uh, but, okay that's hilarious yeah. i was like <laughs> yeah so you have it looks like you have extra cooling but i guess it's more you for aesthetics opportunity yeah for extra cooling the opportunity exactly <laughs> so you just need some good cutters like steel cutters and yeah you can make some holes and adds for extra cooling it, but these are already here. These are already in place, so you don't really need to do too much. But yeah, that's uh, that that was interesting. I honestly thought there was like cooling, and I was like, wait, there's nothing yeah, underneath. I saw, I saw your face changing, everyone. <laughs> so there's a four high, and then there's a four low. So what the four low does is it uh, multiplies the torque um, of the gearing. So when you put it in four low, it puts it 
outputs it as a four to one ratio versus if you were in the high gear. Mm -hmm. So when you're in the four low, it basically turns into like a crawler. It's pretty, pretty wild. We can try it out here somewhere over there in the dirt area. Okay. And you can see like what the torque really feels like when it's in four low. Okay. So yeah, these are the drives. So it's always in two and then you have four high, then you have four low. So we're going to try those out as he said. Um, to show you guys the different ratios for these gears and then you do have the lining so it does protect the Bottom part of it. You can tell Anthony really likes his weather tech. You think <laughs> <laughs> And then you have these uh, manual window knobs Which I haven't seen in the ages, but I mean again those electronic stuff break so having these things definitely reduces the chance of stuff breaking down to like literally zero percent and this door is extremely extremely light compared to like doors of today and just in typical jeep fashion you have this piece right here that holds it together and the bolts but this prevents it from just swinging all the way out but this is again you're really stripped down rugged jeep built for off-roading and city usage because you could daily drive this because you have your AC, you have your radio, Bluetooth, all of that. So it ties it all together. But the main priority of this car is for off-roading purpose. And let's hop in. First, you gotta get pretty high up in there. And then you can slide yourself in. The interior, if you've ever been in the Jeep, just feels like your traditional Jeep. Nothing too crazy. You have your gears right here park it reverse neutral drive one and two your low gears you have your cup holders over here and you have your handbrake the cool part is your armrest has a lock so you could keep your stuff protected in here and you also have your glove compartment with a lock too so things stay protected in there as well um we did talk about the ac again stuff uh, from this day and age the ACs were not included, so to have it was honestly like a luxury. It's kind of like having a cup holder in a Lamborghini Huracan. Pretty rare thing to see. Um, a cool part I do think is really sick is that you have controls on the steering wheel, which I was not expecting from this time. Um, you have your cruise control settings all here. Um, all your radio controls are done here on the Pioneer radio. You have your AC controls down here and then you also have your axle lock your overdrive and then your your wipers and then the heated so it's a cb radio okay you know like truckers and stuff use those. oh got so it like, got it it's, a, it's like some people it's getting a little bit phased out mm -hmm. but a lot of people a lot of older people still use them for when they're on the trails and stuff to communicate because in a lot of places you don't have phone reception got so it if you're in a group of like five six people you guys all tune into the same radio station mm -hmm. and you guys can uh, just pretty much communicate with each other via the cb radio and it's cool it has a little handheld uh speaker right there you see it oh yeah i see it so oh wow that's cool so yeah this allows you to communicate with other drivers that are let's say if you're in a group they can um you guys can tune to the same channel and have conversation while you're driving just because obviously there's no uh phone service or anything of that nature out there uh top speed of 100 miles an hour good luck <laughs> if, if you could get it there but as we were saying earlier speed is not the goal of this i mean this car is located in los angeles so you probably just need it to get to 50 and that's about it i mean stop so much traffic out here you're not really gonna need to hit 100 miles an hour um and also when you're off-roading the goal is not to go fast it's just to have that torque to get over to you know get around the dirt mud all of that you need low tor torque in those low gears this car definitely has it you have your bat your voltage your oil temp things of that nature and your gas this car is 194,000 miles and it's just a testament to the quality of these jeeps are literally bulletproof um there's not a lot of computers a lot of uh witchcraft that goes on inside the cars of this day and age so a lot of them just strip down your your just rugged cars just built to actually built for really like military use 
So you're getting that kind of level of engineering into a car like this. So 194,000 miles, honestly, sounds like a lot. It's not that much. You could probably put another like 200K on this, to be honest. And as long as you just take good care of everything, you could, this car would just drive completely well. You have back seats over here. And there's a decent amount of space for the back seat passengers. They also have the speakers and uh, lights back here. Again, this roof is completely removable. You could take it off. We're not gonna do that today because it's a, it's a lot of work and I, I, I don't feel like <laughs> lifting anything right now, but it's a lot of work, but this can't come off. It's one whole panel. So you probably will need multiple people to help you out with this. You have your visors and it's leather wrapped like a Rolls Royce. So you have some luxury in here. It doesn't have, you're not able to look at yourself. So that's, that's, that's the only difference. And then let's show you the trunk space. I'll show you guys the engine. I'm gonna have Anthony talk through what he's upgraded and what he's changed in here. So let's get to that. So as far as the engine on this thing goes, we have the uh, upgraded radiator. We have an upgraded transmission cooler in the front. Um, we have new water pump thermostat, low temp thermostat. We have um, new belts, tensioners. We have a JK ignition coil set up on this side. We have some upgraded injectors on that side. Um, what else? Um, and pretty much all the fluids have been changed re recently within the last few thousand miles, two, three thousand miles. So this thing is ready to rip. You have a pretty decent sized trunk. Surprisingly, the Corvette has a bigger trunk space, but this is good enough. You could still fit all the necessary things and this folds down. Oh, wow. Never mind. The Corvette's not that big. <laughs> <laughs> this folds so you have more than enough space to store every single thing you need. And yeah, this is your trunk space. And then the closing mechanism, you start with the window first, then this, and then the tire. And locks right in. Now that's all for the Jeep review. We're gonna take this for a drive and talk more about the driving abilities, the capabilities of the car, because that's the biggest selling point of this are those features. So we'll take it for a spin. Protect your windshield with military grade film from my new online store, Protect Lab. Shop our list of offerings from standard size, custom size, full rolls, and even get protection for your helmet visors starting at a low price of $30. Our windshields are perfect for all seasons, daily usage, off-roading, and even work well with wipers and perfect for the car wash. To always ensure that you have a crystal clear view, our film boasts a multi-layer protection with self-healing tech, UV protection, scratch resistance, and an easy install and removal, thanks to our sensitive adhesive layer. Hurry to protectlab.com and get your vehicle and your loved ones protected today. Now back to the vlog. Put it in neutral, put it in four low, uh -huh. and put it in drive, and we can turn the lockers on. See now that you can see the lockers are engaging, gotta roll uh -huh. forward a little bit. Roll forward? Yeah. Off so the front one engages. Yeah. So you can feel like, oh, it might take a minute to engage, but you feel like how the torque is much yeah, more Yeah, yeah, I feel that. When you turn the lockers on, the left and right wheels are 100% locked up together so that when you get like stuck in like a three wheel or something or uh, like one your left and right wheels are on the dirt and your other wheels are stuck in like ruts you can keep going it's not like open diff where you're gonna get stuck so that's what the lockers do okay i see i see and you do notice a difference in the torque the, the response it's really instant when you're driving like this okay i see wow yeah, it's like it really wants to go. Yeah. <laughs> it's completely different. And then you, when you're done, you put, put it neutral. neutral, and then you slide it back down. There you go. All right, cool. And you then know, you can just you drive. Can put it in, you can put it in drive. And you can just take off. Just a little slow. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> And it has a pretty good turning radius. I'll show you guys right now. I left my water bottle there. The 
That's not bad actually for a car this size. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Corvette is much worse. Exactly, yeah, that's really <laughs> good. That's actually better than what I was thinking. <laughs> so we're in the Jeep, taking it for a quick spin around Griffith Park. I think this is like a perfect area to drive it because it's good enough of windy, good enough of dirt, and a good enough of bad roads to really give this Jeep a good run for its money. Starting off, the drive on this car is extremely, extremely smooth. Nice, nice throttle response. Really nice throttle response. It just really gets on it. Again, speed is not the name of the game of this car. It's all about the torque, especially on the low gears. You want to be able to get over bumps, get out of mud and things of that nature and not get stuck. So the low gear torques is where the big selling point of this car is. The braking is a little bit sticky, I'll be honest, but for a car that has wheels this size and things of that nature, it stops pretty well on the dime. Now we're heading uphill and this car just handles these roads perfectly and it doesn't sway too much it doesn't move it doesn't have too much body roll or body movement especially for being this high off the ground just take a look at these roads i'm following the corvette but take a look at these roads and how well the jeep is handling it versus the corvette he has to go around obviously it's a much different practice much lower car but this Jeep just does an amazing job handling roads like this. And to top it off, it's such a great experience driving this. There's a lot of people that have G-Wagons, Rubicons, you know, lifted cars out here in California, in the United States as a whole. So you fit right in. You're not gonna be the only one with like some crazy lifted car or trail worthy car because a lot of people have this. And the best part about this car, it's a marriage of two perfect worlds. You can daily drive this. You can run all your errands, pick up the kids, go grocery shopping, take this to Irwan or Whole Foods, whatever you like in LA. You can also take the top off, which is perfect for this LA weather. It's 10 a.m. and it's about 80 degrees outside. And obviously the sun's not completely out yet because you have the marine layer. But once it comes out, it's a delight to have this, the roof off and all the panels come off on the roof. And you can even extend it to the, the, the doors. I forgot to mention actually, because the doors both have the ability to come off, which is really nice because you can just have a completely open skeleton of a car and just drive it around the city and then on any given moment, you could take it on the trails, which are easily accessible here in Los Angeles or in California. Trails are just about 30 miles away from you in any direction. So this car gives you that ability to do everything. And honestly, everything's pretty easy to put together. The, the roof is about six bolts. The doors are two bolts. And you just have that fabric that rips it off. And honestly, it's perfect. I think it's a really nice car to drive. It, you have your AC2, which is an added bonus in a car like this. You have your AC. So if it's too hot and you're not moving that much, like how we are in this LA traffic. Again, I did mention your zero to 60 times, top speed is not that important because if you're not on the roads, you're stuck in traffic like this barely moving so it has such a nice presence too everyone looks at you while you're on the road everyone's always asking like what you did to it what kind of modifications you have and best part about it you get to throw the jeep owners the peace sign so that's also really cool this really fits into the car culture out here and the functionality aspect just makes it even that much better again this car is built for functionality and not just for the looks and that's why i love it so much now that's it with the review if you guys love this make sure to smash that subscribe button make sure to like and leave a comment of what you guys want to see next 
Um, also, support my windshield protection company at ProTechLab.com. I'm gonna have the link below so you guys can always check it out. We have windshield protection for every single car at a very low price of 85 bucks. So it's cheaper than getting your windshield replaced. So that's the goal. I want everyone to be able to have access to it, not just supercar owners. So um, $85 and also we have 10% discount code for you guys watching this video. So just scroll down to below for the description. You can uh, buy yourself a ProTech windshield cover. And also this car is for sale. So you can hit up Anthony. I'm gonna put his Instagram in the description below. So if you're interested, you have $20,000 and it's serious inquiries only, hit up Anthony and he'll be more than happy to show you this car and you guys can inquire to buy it as well. So with that, it's time to end this vlog. See you guys again in the next video. Peace out.